four minutes in. We're four minutes in and I haven't even got my introduction. I keep messing up. Okay. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today it is time for another pick my book video where you tell me what you want me to read in the upcoming month. Only this time we're doing something a little bit different. So I've been really enjoying this binge reading kind of experience where I latch on to a certain author or a certain genre and I just binge read as much as I can uh, by that individual or within the, that set of books. It sort of is, it is me. Like if I could pick the kind of reading that my personality would be suited for, binge reading would be it. Most recently, I've done it with John Mars, I've done it with Anya Alborn, I've done it with different genres. So that's what we're going to do for this Pick My Book video this month. I have pulled the books that I have by certain authors. And instead of picking one of those books, you're going to pick one of those authors. And I'm going to try to read all of the books that I own by that author. Only one of these authors have I ever read before, so I have five choices and four of the five are going to be completely new to me. But yeah, and I'm going to talk about each of these books very, very briefly because otherwise this video would be 10 years long. So we're just going to focus on the authors, just which style you are most intrigued by. Let me know down in the comments section below which stack of books I'm going to read or try to read in April. The only rule that I gave myself was that I had to own at least four books by an author in order for it to constitute binge reading that author. So the first author <clears throat> on the list of possibilities is Pierre Lemaitre. I do own six books by this author and not going to lie, it would be quite challenging to try to get through six books by this author, but I am very interested in these books and in this author. <laughs> um, the highlight of which is this three-part series featuring the detective Camille Verhoeven um, in Paris. And Alex is probably the most popular of these three books. Alex is known as being kind of like a pretty gruesome crime thriller, but each book follows this detective um, on various cases. It's hard to talk, it's hard for me to talk about books in an abbreviated way. Like I usually am pretty, um, I also have a three days in a life. This is about the disappearance of a child, um, blood wedding. Um, Blood Wedding is about a woman who thinks she might be going crazy or becoming forgetful and then she suspects her husband of like setting her up to basically gaslighting her. <laughs> my, my greatest fear um, ever. So and then finally I have Inhuman Resources. Uh, this one is about a really unconventional interview process that pits a candidate against candidate in a fight to the death. I don't really know if it's a fight to the death. I'm just being dramatic, but it says a role playing game. So, um, six books by Pierre Lemaitre all sound really super interesting. <clears throat> and there's kind of like a unique aspect to each one that makes him a really attractive author to me. Uh, next we have Andrew Piper who writes kind of creepy horror supernatural novels. Um, I spoke most recently about Andrew Piper because I believe the homecoming was offered as a pick my book for March. It was, um, and it did get some votes, but this one was about the, uh, family members who have to stay together for 30 days in order to get an inheritance. The only child is about a psychiatrist who works with criminals and one of her patients uh, claims to have known her mother and also says things that kind of make him sound like a vampire. Um, the Demonologist is about a professor who specializes in Paradise Lost and um, goes to Venice with his daughter and then his daughter is abducted. It says by um, one of the very demons whose existence the professor denies. And then finally, uh, The Damned. 
Uh, this is the story of a man whose twin sister died during childhood in a fire and she won't stop tormenting him in death. Supernatural horror type reads. There are four books in total by Mr. Andrew Piper that I'd be willing to read if they sound interesting to you. If he sounds like an author that you'd like to know more about. Then I have another big stack, but I think there might be an exception or two in here. Um, the author is Paul Cleave. And four of these books that I'm holding are standalone novels. Then these other two that I own, um, Cemetery Lake is the first book in a series. So that's still a possibility to read. But then Joe Victim is actually the sequel to his first published novel. So I don't own that first published novel. I wouldn't want to read Joe Victim. So I think that means that I would have five books by Paul Cleave to read. Uh, Cemetery Lake is the first book that involves a detective named Theodore Tate. It deals with an exhumation and the body isn't who they think it should be or it's not who it's supposed to be. Uh, anyways, uh, A Killer Harvest is about a, uh, a man who's blind and his father has died and he's given the opportunity to actually get his father's eyes. Not sure how that works out, but um, he ends up seeing things that his father saw when he was alive. It's a little creepy, creepy stuff there. Uh, the Killing Hour is about a man named Charlie who wakes up covered in blood with some bumps and bruises and realizes that the news is reporting two women have been murdered the night before and... He has no recollection of how he spent his previous night. So did he kill them? Who knows? Trust No One is a story of a thriller writer, a crime writer, has early onset Alzheimer's and reveals to the world that all of his books were true, that he actually committed the crimes that he wrote about in his novels. I swear I tried to do my research into this, but I also have five minutes alone in the back. And I, I remember talking about this when I hauled this book, but the back does mention Theodore Tate, who is in Cemetery Lake. This book sounds like <clears throat> it takes place after Joe Victim. So here's what I know. <laughs> I know for sure that I would have four novels to read by Paul Cleave. The first of which is the beginning of a series, but that's fine. I'm okay with reading the first book in a series. The other three are definite standalones. There's still a little bit of confusion for me when it comes to Joe Victim and Five Minutes Alone. I feel like Paul Cleave has some series crossover work and I don't want to spoil myself to any books previously. Um, next is the author that I have read before. That author is Ruth Ware. I read In a Dark, Dark Wood. It was one of the very first books that I read after joining BookTube. And it, I, I liked it. I'm not going to say it was awful. It just didn't meet expectations because it had been hyped as this really terrifying mystery. And I didn't find it that groundbreakingly terrifying. It was creepy. The setting. Mostly it was just the setting that was kind of creepy, but anyways. So I do have four additional Ruth Ware books to read. Two of which I've heard great things about. Two of which I have not heard great things about. But those books include uh, The Death of Mrs. Westaway. This involves a woman who kind of impersonates a person. Hmm. This involves a woman pretending to be somebody who is getting an inheritance, basically. The Woman in Cabin 10 is about a woman on a cruise ship who swears up and down that she saw someone go overboard. Only everyone that's supposed to be on the ship is accounted for. Uh, next is The Lying Game. This involves a group of four girls, I believe, that grew up together at the same boarding school and they invented the lying game. And 
then in present time, one of the women has something happened to them and calls on the other three because the past has come back to somehow bite them in the collective behind. And then lastly, we have the turn of the key and on a lot of people's favorites of 2019, but this is the story of a live in nanny who, um, is in a smart house. Um, and then she ends up getting accused of killing the child that she's in charge of. And I believe this book is written kind of as a letter to a lawyer in a pistolary format. I'm not sure. Um, so those are the Ruth Ware options Four from Ruth Ware. The death of Mrs. The death of Mrs. Westaway and turn of the key are the books that I've heard good things about. And then cabin 10 and the lion game are books that turned out to be kind of so, so for people. Um, lastly, the last author that you get to choose from, uh, Linwood Barkley. The first is a noise downstairs. This is about a man who witnesses a colleague of his, uh, trying to dispose of two bodies. And so because of that, he suffers from PTSD <clears throat> and depression and anxiety. And in an effort to make him feel a little bit better, his wife gifts him with a typewriter. Only the man thinks he can hear that he, the man thinks he hears that typewriter typing while everyone else is in bed. And he's thinking it has something to do with that night that all that stuff happened to him. Super, super strange. I also have the book Elevator Pitch. This intrigued me. This involves a terrorist act where one elevator in a sky rise falls from the top floor each day, killing anyone who's in that elevator. I thought it sounded super good. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, then I have the book No Time for Goodbye. This is about a woman named Cynthia, who as a child woke up to find everyone in her family had vanished. And then 25 years later, she finally finds out the truth. Um, then I have No Safe House by Linwood Barkley. This is sort of a sequel to No Time for Goodbye. It involves Cynthia's present day family. So her husband and her daughter, Grace, and her daughter, Grace ends up following an irresponsible man, an irresponsible boy, I don't know, into this house. And then it says in order to save her, they'll come face to face with the guy who rescued them seven years earlier. This takes place seven years after No Time for Goodbye. So uh, I don't want to know a ton about it. I don't want to ruin No Time for Goodbye. But um, it says they come face to face with the person who saved them. But that that person is still an unrepentant killer. So that just makes no time for goodbye sound way more interesting. And then finally from this author is the book called Parting Shot. This is about, I mean, it takes place in a town called Promise Falls, which Linwood Barkley has a Promise Falls trilogy. So I'm not sure why this book isn't necessarily included in that, but it takes place in Promise Falls. It is about a young man who is accused of getting drunk and killing his girlfriend in an automobile accident, but he has no recollection of that. And he's not facing any, um, criminal charges and the town is pretty outraged, but a man named Cal accepts the job of looking into all of the threats being made to this young man and his family, um, by the people in the town, because they're convinced that he should be held accountable. So I know that was kind of a mess because I was trying to get through the synopsis of about 20 different books in a very short amount of time. I don't like to make these videos super duper long, but I will do my best to link for you the descriptions of each book down below. But if you're interested in reading up more on each book that I mentioned in order to choose which author you'd like me to read from, um, by all means, take your time. I guess maybe if I am being honest, there is one author that I prefer over the others, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to weigh in on that because I want you guys to feel free to choose whichever author <clears throat> you're most interested in hearing me talk about. This could be a gigantic failure. 
and we may never be doing anything like this ever again. Check out those books in the description box. Leave a comment to let me know which author that you choose. And I will see you all very soon.